Railroad and trucking officials in Douglas, Oklahoma, spent the afternoon cleaning up after an accident that left people here sighing with relief. Three engines and six empty boxcars derailed after hitting a trailer loaded with salt water for a nearby oil field. The driver of the truck said he stopped before crossing the track, but he did not see or hear the approaching train. A man who works near the track says this is the first accident he has seen, but says there have been a lot of near misses, and he places the blame with the railroad engineer. Uh, they don't blow that whistle before they get to the, uh, the, the street here, and we've they got a line of cars down through here, and then the elevator, and when the uh, train clears the space between the elevator and the cars, they're already on the street before uh, anybody even realizes they're around. And what and something needs to be done is to either blow that whistle or get some lights here to let people know that that train is coming. People here say a lot of luck was involved in today's accident, both bad and good. Bad because had the train been a few seconds slower and the truck a few seconds faster, the accident wouldn't have happened at all. Good because if things had been the other way around, the truck's driver may have been killed. But the residents of Douglas don't think luck is the way to run a railroad, and they want to see things change before their luck runs out. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4, in Douglas, Oklahoma. coming through. And the truck come from this way. And when, by the time I got, by the time I got right on him, that's when he hit me right in the side, going this way. He came up here and talked to me. He, he says his brakes went out on the truck and he couldn't stop it. That's what he said. The Spring Arts Festival doesn't die with the sun. The early evening hours seem to bring new life to the festivities that have never really died. As the lights come on, the air accepts a chilling nip. The patrons of the art are much the same after dark as they are in the light of day. They still peruse through the stalls, looking more than buying. They still leave the beaten paths to beat paths of their own across the grass. And there's always the food as popular an art form as anything. And children still wonder at the finding and losing of new companions. But why do the patrons come out at night? What is the attraction that draws them downtown? I, you know, it tunes me into the people more and less to what's around me. And that's more fun, it's different. Oh, I think it's a little less crowded during the day and uh, so you see a little bit more uh, with less hurriedness but a lot more people and so the excitement and fun's more fun at night, I think. So the show will continue until the end of the week with opportunities for day and night people to enjoy the arts. Charles Schnitzer action for the Arts Festival. If this is what it was like in 1889, the youngsters back then certainly enjoyed themselves. These children are on the grounds of the 1889er Harn Museum. They're taking part in the Diamond Jubilee Days of Pioneer Life. Continual tours of this 1904 Victorian-style home and a 10-acre park are now underway. <laughs> And there's entertainment. It's easy to find a costumed 1889er society member who's willing to take the time to show you around. 
Everyone is being invited to celebrate the history-making era of the Boomer Sooner heritage. Ben McCain, Action 4 at the Harn Museum in Oklahoma City. The only thing that we know at this time, apparently, that uh, he became involved in a uh, possible argument with the subject that lived at that residence, uh, possibly over a earlier uh, drug deal, uh, which resulted in him being shot in the apartment. Did you have any witnesses to the shooting? We have a couple of witnesses that we've talked to. What about a possible suspect? We have a possible suspect that we're looking for. And we're not releasing any uh, names on it at this point. Uh, we're still in the process of the, of the investigation. Ralph Adair says he thinks he's under fire. The recent admission to wrongdoing by material supplier Virgil Perry included statements implicating Adair. Adair says those statements contradict an earlier sworn statement made by Perry in which he said he never paid a kickback or bribe to Adair. Adair allowed us to take pictures of him outside his house tonight but would not talk on camera. To explain the petition filed on his behalf today, he referred us to his lawyer, Andy Coates. Coach says the petition will allow Perry to be cross-examined under oath without going to trial. He went in front of the grand jury back in November and said that he hadn't done anything wrong, and uh, uh, we expected that uh, maybe we'd hear something after that, and we haven't. So this is sort of a precautionary measure to be sure that Mr. Adair's rights are fully protected. Adair has not been indicted on any charges, but this petition, Coach says, could be an important part of his defense if he ever is. Ted Brown, Action 4 on the Northwest Side. Testimony, which time he will then enter an order for the witnesses to appear on a date subsequent to give testimony on these things so that we can ask him about the statements. And... In mid-April 1942, a squadron of land-based B-25s took off from naval carriers and attacked strategic Japanese land bases. The attack turned the American spirit around and helped to win the Pacific War. The leader of the attack was Lieutenant Colonel J.H. Doolittle. Doolittle became a general and a hero. The events of that April and the rest of his military career, which ended after the war, set the tone for the rest of his life. The 85-year-old war hero was at Tinker Air Force Base Wednesday. He still keeps an eye on the world, and the Falkland Islands are a concern to him. He feels the United States is doing all they can. 
expect? I can remember when the Prime Minister Winston Churchill said, I do not choose to preside at the dissolution of the British Empire, and still it was inevitable. And about <clears throat> all they've got left now really is the Falkland Islands, and I think it means a great deal to them. And I think that Haig uh, will do a superb job because he is an extremely competent, understanding person who has had a great deal of experience in the military and a considerable experience in government and a great deal of common sense. But the British strike on the Falklands is as much a matter of pride to England as Doolittle's raid was to America some 40 years ago. Pride can be positive. From here, the general goes on to England to reunite with British airmen. The pride will still be there. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4, at Tinker Air Force Base. It was high noon on the South Oval of the University of Oklahoma campus. A variety of people gathered to protest the usual array of political topics, President Reagan's budget cuts, the advancement of nuclear weapons, the U.S. government's involvement in El Salvador, feminist causes and concerns. There was a lot of speech making. The Klan in the 1920s, when DeBar led the Klan in Oklahoma, was an organization which used violence and terror to press its views upon other people. It was a relatively quiet protest. Perhaps one of the reasons for the low attendance is that students are nearing finals week. They're studying for exams and writing final papers. Maybe those two realities are hitting closer to home than what's going on in Washington or abroad. Bellashaw Action 4 at the University of Oklahoma. The Witness Center was busy again this afternoon, not with the usual crush of people who come to testify in court, but with a flurry of activity brought on by a judgment against the center. A court ruled the center has to be out of the Cleveland County Courthouse basement by 5 this afternoon to make more space for the Sheriff's Office. Center Director Lisa Hammond wants to stay in the basement offices because it's close to the courtrooms. That makes it easier for the people she helps. We've been trying to do our best to keep them from being in the hall with the defendants, the people that they're here to testify against, so that they're not intimidated, they're not afraid to come to court, so they won't be faced with the family and such. The center is moving to the second floor in the building behind the courthouse. It will share space with the district attorney's office. That space is also used as the DA's law library. Hammond says it's cramped, but they may not be there forever. She and the DA are taking the case to the state Supreme Court. The center's ultimate location will be up to them. Ted Brown, Action 4 in Norman. A Speak Out for Equality lecture was held today in the Oklahoma City University Law School building. The ERA Countdown campaign sponsored today's meeting to discuss laws which discriminate or are insufficient to protect the interests of Oklahoma women. Since today is designated as Law Day, ERA supporters feel it's vital that citizens in Oklahoma are aware of the inadequacy in current statutes. Several guest speakers were on hand. State Representative Freddie Williams led the discussion in her usual colorful manner. This is the one that hit us real hard. The husband is the head of the family. Well, I think my Bible tells that as Christ is head of the church. I, I read that somewhere. But it didn't say he may choose, he may choose. Any reasonable place or mode of living and the wife must conform there too. Fellows, you're still in control. 
The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission receives over 1,300 complaints a year from women who claim employment discrimination. According to one EEOC official, these could be remedied by changing the current statutes item by item or by ratifying one amendment to the United States Constitution. Uh, the other solution which many people are advocating is simply to pass an Equal Rights Amendment that will carte blanche do all of the 40 or 50 statutory things that Congress would need to do in one fell swoop. Though the Equal Rights Amendment failed to be ratified last January in the state legislature, supporters for this Lady. amendment have not given up hope that someday Dollar. the injustices to women here. may be for resolved. Carol Lambert, Action because 4. Our mission was to, uh, to go over there and expound free trade and to back up uh, Ambassador Brock and the other U.S. trade negotiators in their efforts to apply pressure and open up uh, access to the Japanese markets uh, for our products. Do you feel your trip was successful? Well, uh, yes. I think certainly it was, it was worth it. We won't know the, the outcome of it for some months yet, but we our mission over there, our objective was to, as I said, to back up our trade negotiators. And uh, we got tremendous press coverage and uh, TV media coverage over there. Uh, we brought focus to this, uh, this problem, this trade problem, to the Japanese people. Uh, while we were over there, there were 8,000 farmers demonstrating in front of the U.S. Embassy. The, the farmers are opposed to trade liberalization over there. They have protected their markets and they want to maintain that protection. It would be absolutely perfect for the 75th Diamond anniversary of the state of Oklahoma. Now, the next major event that's coming up is the centennial. And if ever I've seen an opportunity to have a real focal point for state government, it would be the centennial in 89. This uh, show should be able to be changed, say, something like eight to 10 minutes long. And it uh, would be a kind of rallying point for all of our citizens as well as those who come who want to know more about Oklahoma. While General Motors is starting up production lines, Marty Engelmeyer can only start up his lawnmower. The laid-off second shift worker is making ends meet by mowing lawns in a southwest Oklahoma City neighborhood. engelmeyer has been with GM for five years, as the last two in Oklahoma City. But he was laid off with the rest of the second shift back in November. Unemployment compensation ran out in February, and his GM compensation checks run out at the end of this month. But the bills keep coming in. Marty says it's impossible for him to come up with this $800 a month house payment by mowing yards for Thank five you. bucks a shot. Talk to you later. Okay. Judy Engelmeyer feels the frustration too. 
She does everything she can to save money. Judy's been buying a lot of baloney lately. The Inglemeyers say they understand and sympathize with GM's financial problems, but they have problems of their own. I don't know what we're going to do, you know, when, even if he has to go out and get a $4 job, it's not going to, you know, meet the budget. It's not going to do it. If things don't get any better, we're going to have to sell, sell the house and move or just try to find a smaller place to live. I'm willing to work, but, you know, every time I try to put in an application, they tell me, I'm sorry, you work for General Motors. Many city employers are afraid if they hire GM workers, they'll quit if the automaker calls them back. Right now, the Inglemeyers hope anyone will call with a job offer. Mark O'Neill, Action 4, Southwest Oklahoma City. Argentina lost this ship, the cruiser Belgrado, on Sunday. It was sunk by a British submarine. About 360 Argentine sailors are still missing in the freezing waters of the South Atlantic. On Tuesday, Argentina counterattacked. An Argentine jet fighter fired a missile into the British destroyer Sheffield. As many as 30 British sailors are believed to have been killed. Major General J.T. Edwards isn't surprised Argentina was able to fight back. Edward says they're well supplied with French Mirage jets, and he had this advice for the British. They must keep their ships out of range of land-based uh, aircraft. So they must either now withdraw their, their fleet to east of the Falcons, or they must attack the air bases on Argentine soil. Since the U.S. has sided with England, Edward says the other superpower may try to improve relations with Argentina. I think the Soviet Union will stay out of it as long as there is, in fact, active combat taking place, as, as will, I think, the United States. So I think it will give the Soviet Union an opportunity then to enter into South America, either directly or through a surrogate. Uh, Cuba comes to mind uh, the quickest because of their uh, activity in Latin America. Bill Ross, Action 4 at Tinker Air Force Base. This isn't an Easter egg hunt. They're not searching for a buried treasure. And no, they aren't digging for worms. These youngsters are involved in the 31st Annual International Land, Pasture, and Range Judging Contest. This began when a small group of Oklahomans decided to develop guidelines for land evaluation similar to livestock judging. They uh, look at the texture of the surface soil, the subsoil, they evaluate the permeability of the soil. They'd evaluate the shrink swell potential because that is important to, for foundations. They evaluate the soil for water table because if you have a water table in the soil, then you're going to have a problem with drainage. Officials of this contest say sound management of our land resources today is the key to a more productive tomorrow. What these youngsters are learning will help them in the future, help them buy that right piece of property the right piece of property to farm on, or the right piece of property to build a home on. Ben McCain, Action 4, north of Yukon. The gathering on the North Oval today was illegal according to OU rules and regulations, but organizers carried on anyway. About 75 people gathered on the grounds in front of the old chemistry building to protest the structure's name, DeBar Hall. It's the DeBar part they don't like. Edwin DeBar was a chemistry professor back in the 1920s. He was also a grand dragon in the Ku Klux Klan. Many students, especially the Black People's Union, want the name changed to anything, just as long as it's someone not involved with the Klan. There's not much they can do about it this late in the year, but the issue won't go away during the summer break. His involvement with the Ku Klux Klan is just something that you just can't over, overlook. And uh, at this particular stage, we're, the BPU is trying to go through the, uh, the university structures to go about the name change, and we're just going to wait and see what happens. The student leader of the local NAACP chapter 
says that if this issue continues, it could have an adverse effect on recruitment of black, Jewish, and Catholic students, which would have an adverse effect on the university. Ted Brown, Action 4 on the OU campus. There's no need for thanks for our gift. <coughs> the pleasure is all. There's nothing about anything being still in the makings. I made a commitment in October of last year, and there is absolutely no problem with uh, my commitment. I make a commitment, I keep it, and there's no problem. Signer in Washington. Hello, Floyd. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm trying to get the right Excuse me. Would it? So we've got to go back to this balanced budget basic concept. And if we don't do that, we're going to see a continuation of high interest rates. So I think that uh, in the next couple of months, that could do more to help the interest rate policy going down. Now, will that be enough for this year? The answer is I doubt it. It's going to be a long-term type of thing. Hopefully early next year we'll see that. We should see short-term interest rates go down uh, during the summer. But the long-term interest rates, which is what everyone is paying, uh, are going to stay up there until we get back to some basic fundamentals, which is you can't spend more than you take in.